Hello, everybody. Hi, and welcome to Tea Time History Chat Live. Um, just waiting for Instagram to catch up as per usual. Thank you. If you're joining me on YouTube or Facebook, I will let you know what we're doing in a moment. Since um, Instagram, I don't know what it's doing. So welcome. Today, I want to talk about who the diggers were. This is something that's new to me, but I think you'll find it interesting. So today, here's your tea time chat live. We're going to be talking about the diggers and we're going to be talking about the rise of the Tudors, which is a tour which is about to be released. So I want you to know all about that if you're interested in coming along or even if you're just interested in hearing about what that will entail, because it's quite a cool itinerary, of course. I've just made it up. So I've just created it. So of course, I'm not going to make a rubbish one. Um, how are you all doing? Thank you for joining me. I'm streaming live on Instagram, Facebook and YouTube. And um, the sun has come out just as I've come inside. So I don't know what's going on there. Clearly, I've done something wrong. Maybe I didn't salute the magpie this morning. But that's okay because I'm here with you. Good morning, Rennie. Good morning, Maria. I can see you joining. Hiya, History Dude 90. How are you doing? Let me know where you're joining me from. Um, I apologize for being slightly late today. Um, things happen, don't they? Things happen, especially when you are the one top of the morning to you, Caroline. Uh, when you are everything to everybody. <laughs> That is me at the moment. So I am on my coffee. Don't normally have coffee past 12 o'clock a day in the day, but yeah, I am going to um Caroline, I'm going to join you in pretending it's still the morning. Let's start again. <laughs> Bethany, uh, hello, hi, welcome, Mike. Um 1111 wishes come true in Ontario, Canada. Welcome, Portobello. He should do this in Montreal, of course. I remember your photos when you had snow. Good morning, Linda. Linda in Michigan. Linda, who I can't wait to see in September. We've been chatting because we have um, we have the Elizabeth I and Mary, Queen of Scots tour in September, which Linda is coming on with his, her lovely husband, Jeff. Marianne, welcome. Who else have we got? So, everyone, today I am going to introduce you to something. Uh, Mac Claudia? In uh, in Uruguay, oh, amazing. We're quite an international bunch, aren't we? Which is rather lovely. Heidi, welcome. Um, uh, Becky, what is this all about? It's a good question. Today we're going to be talking about the diggers. I'm going to introduce you to a group called the diggers. I am newly introduced to them. I think you'll find their story quite fascinating. I'm not claiming to be an expert, but I think you will enjoy it. I'm also going to talk about the rise of the Tudors, which is a new um, tour that we've got coming out. MJ over there in Hamilton and and Sora in Coleraine. Fabulous. Marie, I woke up today to find out that I bought all three of Aleri's books late on Sunday night when I was super stressed and did not even remember. <laughs> not sure if I should be impressed. Well, if, if you've got three of O'Leary's books, then you will, at least you'll have three great books. O'Leary uh, Lynn is um, a speaker on, uh, in fact, she spoke on the last two online history festivals and she's speaking on the next one as well. The next online history festival, for any of you who don't know, is in November. And O'Leary Lynn is, um, is, uh, is speaking. She is a um, textiles historian. That's probably not exactly her title. She curated um uh the um uh, she, she, she was sorry she used to work at Hampton Court Palace and in amongst other amazing exhibitions she curated the Bacton Alter Cloth exhibition which is the one Bacton Alter Cloth for anyone who doesn't know is the um it's called that because it's found in a church in Bacton you being used in an altar cloth thought to potentially be the dress of Elizabeth I the one where it ma seems to match the dress that Elizabeth I is wearing in the rainbow portrait. Anyway, O'Leary Lynn was um, was heavily involved in that. So, and she is talking at the Online History Festival. Um, while I remember, I might as well um, tell you, you can get tickets for that at the Tudors2023.eventbrite.co.uk. So, I don't know if you can hear the uh, 
<laughs> see i i put there's a sorry tea time history chat live on a wednesday at one o'clock and then the dustbin men decided that they would also use one o'clock on a wednesday to come around so hopefully hopefully you can't hear that too badly um right hey hey pretty as a picture as the picture excuse me mm. right let's get going so um I just first of all want to say a hello and thank you to Julie. She is the um, the newest of my patrons. Oh, Bethany was at Hatfield House, yeah, it's, and saw the rainbow portrait last um, last week. Yes, it's um, that yeah, that's where it's and the ermine portrait, of course, is at um, is at Hatfield House as well. Hatfield House doesn't look like it did when Elizabeth was there, except for the Great Hall. Um, uh, where she held her first council meeting of course that was where Elizabeth was when she found out that she was queen and um it's a great it's a great house the the, the one that's there now that obviously um date uh, post dates Elizabeth but uh not by much and it's and it's beautiful um yeah great oh I'm, I fancy a trip to Hatfield House I I have so many places that I still want to go first you know initially or I haven't been for a very very long time and then I've got all these places that I just want to get back to as well I should just get on the road I am thinking maybe I should just buy a camper van and just go get some kind of wicked internet connection mobile internet connection and just like get on the road <laughs> oh I'm talking myself into it oh so I have been reading yet another new book <laughs> I have a few on at the moment. I, I think I'm starting to work out why my brain might be quite fuzzy. I've um, I told you about this one last week. Now you can't get hold of this one at the moment. This is this is finally I have some perks to my job. But this is um, this is the Palace by Gareth Russell, and it's not out until August in the UK, December I think in the USA and Canada. Not sure for the rest of the world. Um, it's all about Hampton Court Palace from the time of the Tudors to the Windsor. So it's telling the history of the palace through the people um, who were associated with it, who, who, who lived there, who had an impact on it. So I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. My eyesight's really bad, so hence I'm quite a slow reader. But I am going to be interviewing Gareth um, in the middle of July. So if you would like to... I, I understand you won't have been able to read the book, but if you have any questions that you want to put to Gareth either about Hampton Court Palace, about the people who live there, which include Anne Boleyn, include um, Catherine Howard, which, of course, he also wrote the biography of Catherine Howard. Uh, if you want to put any questions to Gareth, if you're in my Patreon, which is patreon.com um, forward slash British history, if you're in there, you will be able to put your questions to Gareth. It's in the patron only section of the interview. And actually... Um, it doesn't mean that you can, uh, it, does, sorry, it doesn't mean that you're stuck to just, especially in this case, asking questions about the book, which is what I'll be asking him questions on. You can ask him questions about any period of history. So, um, Becky, if you're asking what time, what time period for the palace is from, so, so Gareth covers from actually the reign of Henry the seventh, um, uh, yeah, maybe just before Henry the Seventh. Let's say from Henry the Seventh through to well, I haven't got to the end yet. But it says to the Windsors, so I'm I'm, I'm pretty sure there's there's things, although they don't own it now, the Crown. I'm pretty sure there's stories about Ka uh, Catherine Middleton, uh, the new Princess of Wales, in here as well. So anyway, that's one of the books, but that wasn't the one I was going to tell you about. The I'm also listening to a book on Audible, so I can't show it you, but called The Restless Republic, by Anna Key. I think that's how you pronounce her name. It's K-E-A-Y. Bit of a historian joke there. Maybe she's um, talking about the wrong historical period uh, because she's uh, the book is about the Republic, as you as you can tell. So this is the period uh, in the mid seventeenth century where we have um, no monarchy. Henry the uh, Henry Jesus Charles the first has been beheaded. And in, in 1649, his son is restored in 1660. And her curiosity was piqued as to, well, OK, but what ha what actually happens 
um, in England during that that period. So the book is fascinating. I'm I'm nowhere near all the way through it yet, but I'm hoping to get Anna on when I have finished it. I'm hoping to get Anna on as well as a guest. Um, so the the rest of the Republic it covers um, lots of uh, loads of different characters in there um, that were that were that were um, that came to prominence in during that time period. But what is really fascinating is how um, promises were, you know, what were the promises like when in reality? So what were the promises of, um, you know, if we get rid of this tyrannical king, then every, everyone's, everyone's lives are going to be improved. Everyone's lives are going to be improved. You know, we just we just need to get rid of uh, we just need to get rid of the king, and then everything will be absolutely brilliant for everybody. Well, the rest of the Republic by Anna Key goes into what the reality was, what actually was the case during the uh, the eleven years of the Commonwealth in England, um, and and how. So, so yeah, anyway, so there's loads of interesting things, but the one I wanted to, the one thing I wanted to cover today, because I find them fascinating, is a group called the Diggers. And so, so during the Civil War, you had, the, the everyone was, was hit by a Civil War, of course, but ordinary people were taxed. And then you had a population of um, 5 million and armies of tens of thousands who were um, all over the country. Now, when they were in towns and villages, they were supposed to pay for board and food. However, they they weren't getting paid. So they would, in you know, the name of the effort, would demand board and lodgings. When they got to a town, the town elderman might dish them out to the poorer houses, keeping them away from their own houses, of course. Um, you see this with immigration now. And the and the, so the poor people were paying the tax and they were actually, in reality, providing uh, board, uh, bed and board for troops. They were starving. Um, you also had, during the Civil War, there's things like, I don't know if you know, but houses were actually destroyed in order to make uh, this happen around Gloucester um, as an example H homes were destroyed so that there was a clear path for the cannon <laughs> uh, cannon fire you know the, the country and people's ordinary lives were decimated um, trading was really difficult so people's businesses were um, were, were, were lost overnight so this was in incredibly difficult if not fatal for a lot of people period so january end of january 1649 and charles i is beheaded this is supposed to be the start of this um you know this is supposed to be this thank you liverpool let's see how i get on um it, it, this is supposed to be the start of this utopia for one you know yeah, I'm sure it was sold by some people as a utopia. It was, it was going, you know, getting rid of the king was going to solve so much things, uh, so much. Um, so, Becky, was Cromwell running it all? No, not actually. He he becomes um, a, a, obviously becomes a figurehead because he becomes the protectorate um, in, but no, he's, he's not, he's not leading it so much. If you... Um, Ooh, I think it's in the, ooh, I was about to say, if you look at my interview with Julian Humphreys, but it's in the Stuart Summit, I think, um, list of talks. So um, you might have to, uh, you can get them on buymeacoffee.com forward slash Philippa B. Um, so yeah, so, so, so Charles I is beheaded end of January, 1649. Supposed to be this wonderful time. So, if you can get rid of a king and you can get rid of your archbishops and your bishops and you can get rid of MPs and you can, you can, you know, you're, you're turning on its head things that have been absolute. They're not going anywhere. You know, these things are set. I mean, they'd had the dissolution of the monasteries, which could have taught them a couple of centuries, uh, one century earlier that, uh, that things that seem permanent and aren't necessarily permanent. But so, Yes, with that 
comes the, well, brilliant. So what else can we turn on its head? What about this problem of people starving because we have enclosures? So we have a very few number of people controlling the land. What if we could till that land? What if ordinary people for just the access to that land and the access to what we can grow do all the work? This sounds good. We can do that. We can do that. Um, and so there was, there was there was various movements. There was one particular one called the Levellers, which were a faction of the the side which had you know they, they were the part of the army, um, and they wanted literally like their their name suggests everything leveling out. So not the opportunity. So some people were arguing for the opportunity to for things like. Uh, uh, being able to own property and land whereas they were more radical in the right let's take it down so that everyone has the same okay that is obviously a political style movement and you know at the beginning it's sort of like well you know isn't this what we're all going this is isn't that this what we're all actually fighting for but of course it's not because once your enemies enemy doesn't exist the bond you have starts to break down and um the 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 various factions who saw the post um uh abolition of the monarchy different differently start to arguments themselves and you have mutiny within the army that is quashed by cromwell and um, fairfax who's the head of the army now, at a similar time, so in the um, April, I think it's spring of 1649, you have a group of people um, uh, in um, oh, St. George's Hill, mm, was it Surrey? Sorry, I can't remember the, um, the county, who... Now they're somehow, for some reason, they're from a different parish, but they they identify this piece of land that's not being used, um, piece of common land, um, as far as they can they can make out or argue, and they set to work digging, digging and planting um, crops, carrots, whatever. Um, uh, pretty as, as the picture. After they killed the king, how did they ask the next man to become king? Yeah. Oh, Brian, you have sunny, hot Cornwall. Nice. I think it's got hot and sunny as I come in today. It was freezing before. I, I had a coat on inside. Um, Heidi, yes, catch you later. Tells from the Fox Den, hello. Um, so they... Um, I would have to go into that. I would like to read up on that more before I give you a, a definite answer. But basically, it was identified that they needed a leader. And Cromwell actually reluctantly um, was asked and, um, uh, and and took on the role. Tales from the Fox Den. You're watching me on both. Hello. And thank you for the badge on Instagram. Thank you very much. Um, our man is it's nice and sunny in London. Fantastic. Pretty as the picture. New South Wales. Hello. So that's where you are. Wonderful. Um, must be quite early there. Early, late, late. Okay, mixed up. So um they go, they, they set to to work uh digging. So hence the name the diggers. Um and the idea was to um sorry and they were led by um oh becky thank you very much for the badge on instagram if you do want to um support me you can buy badges on instagram you can buy super chats on youtube i think it's stars on facebook or you become become a patron um if you want so that i can give some back that's five pounds a month it's patreon.com forward slash british history for some more ongoing support but um but very very grateful for the badges thank you so much Hello, Beverly. How are you doing? So, yeah, so they set about they they um they are led by a couple of men. Now, there's one one who's a, an old an ex army officer. He's a little bit hyper. <laughs> he's a little bit energetic. He's a little bit a uh, little bit difficult to deal with. But the other man I want to focus on was called Jared Winstanley. Now, he'd been a to be fair failed 
clo- um, clothier, a uh, cloth merchant in London before the Civil War kicked off. He'd done his apprenticeship. He'd um, become a free man of London. He'd set up his own business. He wasn't very good at it. He wasn't very good at it. He was very trusting. He allowed people to extend their credit. And then when their credit didn't, you know, when they didn't pay, he couldn't pay his suppliers and he he lost out. Uh, he lost his business. So he'd moved out to the countryside and um, to a more rural area. And uh, it's called, I think he, he moved first to Street Cobham, I think it was, and then to Church Cobham. Um, but he uh, he he dis- he started to work work the land instead. Now, when civil war kicked off, he was one of these people affected by you know the taxes, the um, w- the also the the weather played a big part. There was droughts followed uh, you know some years followed by storms which which ruined the crops. Other years it was really really hard. Um, really really hard and the um the the and then and then the burden of feeding the army etc also came down to these people so moving out of the city and into a rural area unfortunately didn't mean the end of stress for uh for win stanley so um but after the civil war what i would say about jared win stanley is he seems an incredibly gentle soul he really believed in the ability, um, in the potential of what could happen if people come together selflessly to achieve something. And it was very practical. It was, let's take this piece of land, which, by the way, if you look it up now, it's a golf course, but take this piece of land and make it productive for food. People haven't got enough food. Um, Now, Bearing in mind you've got the levellers at the same time sort of demanding equality in terms of all sorts of things, including land ownership. The fact that this uh, group wanted to um, use a bit of common land to grow their own vegetables. And it, it doesn't, I, I, from what I gather, it's not common land as in no one owns it. There was still someone who owned it. And of course, um, that's going to become an issue in in the future. Um, now, Fairfax, who's the leader of the army, had been made aware, head of the army, he'd been made aware of the diggers digging at St. George's Hill. And he sent out someone to have a look and they said, oh, to be honest, they're not, they're not doing anything. It's it's fine. They're just they're just digging. They're growing some vegetables. It's fine. Now, what Win Stanley wanted to encourage was he—he he had this vision that if he could inspire people to do this, that people would start doing this all over the country. We'd solve the hunger. We would solve, you know, ha- getting people clothes, shelter. It would. It would be. It's. 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 What would we call it now? Like a social community project sort of thing. Everyone working together towards a common and um a common and goal that just serves everybody um now what happens when when these people actually start to make it a success because they also at the same time recognize that publicizing what they're doing is going to be really powerful and so they publish pamphlets so their name the diggers is kind of exponentially uh they're, they're more famous than than perhaps they um you think there were a lot more of them by how famous they become but this is what win stanley wants to do he wants to um to encourage everybody to to do this and he comes across um opposition not from the army actually so although they're dealing with the levelers they don't see the diggers as um particularly problematic and while that is the case no one else also does anything um however the um the 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 situation gets more tense with what the levelers are doing there's there's a rebellion um some are uh 
executed. Um, their uh, funerals become points of mass protest and the the army has to start becoming a little bit more careful and a little bit more hard hand, uh, heavy handed. Um, and they start to actually beca- uh, get attacked and soldiers come um, just a couple at night and the so the, what the what the diggers had done is that is create little huts little houses on the same common land so that they could um they could watch the crop they could you know make sure it's okay maybe till it i don't know late at night early in the morning when the daylight hours are long um but they start to come under under attack physical attack by the soldiers and then there that happens just as a sort of nasty nasty attack but two two soldiers come so it's not a a mass sort of pile on but then that emboldens local landowners who pay for jobs basically to come and um and and ruin ruin the um ruin where they have uh done all the 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 digging and sorry all the planting um so and that unfortunately gets worse and worse. They move, so they they start again in um, was that in some in church? I can't remember where it was near near because for some reason they'd started their first endeavor outside of their own parish. Second time they try, it's inside their own parish. Everyone actually there locally is quite supportive of it. However, the local landowner is basically the stat. Well, the landowner is a child, and his stepfather completely uh, no ties to the area whatsoever decides he's going to bring court action and actually court action had been brought against them in the first um, uh, place as well they started trying to get them do, done for trespass and, and they were found guilty but it was in, it was it was like an <laughs> it, it was it was a foregone conclusion they refused to pay for um, for legal representation for themselves because they saw themselves as innocent however you weren't allowed to defend yourself in court so all they could do was sit and listen uh the jury had been selected to be biased against them and so they were found guilty and actually ended up um in in prison short for shortly and then they they came out undeterred and started again in their own parish winston Win stanley has just he 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 comes across as someone who he was just very, very sure that he was on the right tracks. He knew that if he could just persuade enough people th- that this could be good for everybody. He couldn't see how this co- couldn't be good for everybody. Of course, the people in power want to stay in power. They want to stay rich. Um, and um, I mean, we've never really got away from that anyway. But this was... Like I say, after the after the monarchy had gone, this is supposed to have been the time. Excuse me, this is supposed to have been the chance that the the, the to, to to get rid of these hierarchies to to kind of even the even the um the lot for people. Anyway, doesn't happen, um, and he makes a very interesting observation direct to government in the summer of sixteen forty nine. And he says something along the lines of, have you cut off the king's head simply to establish yourself uh, in the chair of government like a thief kills a true man for his money? So he's, he is actually he's quite fearless. He's just stating what he sees as the truth. Now, as I say, I'm hoping to get anarchy uh, uh, who wrote who's written this book restless republic i'm hoping to get her on as a uh, i haven't asked her yet but i'm hoping to get her on as a guest so we can really delve into what was it really actually like during the um during the republican years we, we hear about christmas being banned and theaters being closed um, but i'm really interested to find out more uh in terms of how did the new government effectively square not really changing much for the common man and woman um and uh and 
yeah how did how did they square that and so how did that get background to you can start to see how it got background to the monarchy being reinstated it wasn't sort of for a fairy tale idea of what monarchy was from the very beginning but maybe the failed experiment of republicanism so anyway, I thought you might enjoy the diggers it's a bit of a whistle stop tour of them but hopefully that um that that pricked your interest it's a really good book anyway as well um so yeah there you go right so shall we talk the rise of the Tudors as well now so this is the other thing I was going to speak to you about today the rise of the Tudors is a new tour that I've got going in September uh, 2024 so this is going to be from the 21st till the 27th of September. So if you're interested, if you think you might be interested, pencil those dates in your diary just in case so that when it comes out, you can you can have a look. But I can tell you a little bit of detail about it now. A few people, quite a few people have said to me, I'd love to do loads of castles. Um, you know, if you thought about doing castles and cathedrals, and which we might, I might just do a pure castles and cathedrals tour one day as well. But, but the other thing people ask me about is going to Wales because it's it's not the easiest place to get to and from if you're not um if you're, if you're not driving if you're not in a car and so i have developed a tour which um which looks at the early stages of the tudors dynasty so it's called the rise of the tudors and we're taking in pembroke castle which is um the uh the birthplace of Henry the Seventh, Margaret Beaufort gave birth to uh, to Henry the Seventh at Pembroke Castle. Remember, she was thirteen at the time. Ooh, and this is another thing you you might find interesting. I am also going to be interviewing um, in the not too distant future, in August. In fact, it's booked in Nicola Tallis, and I'm going to be interviewing her about Margaret Beaufort. So again, if you're a patron, if you're a member of my Patreon, which is patreon.com forward slash British History, you will be able to put your questions about Margaret Beaufort to Nicola Tallis. So yeah, so the first um, stop on the tour is going to be Pembroke Castle. We're going to go to Raglan Castle, which is where young Henry VII um, spent his time. Of course, he wasn't Henry VII uh, then. He was way, way, way off any kind of idea of ever becoming king then. Um, we're going to take in Gloucester Cathedral um, because it's beautiful and because we're near it. And because if we went past it, I'm pretty sure everyone would say, how come we're not going to Gloucester Cathedral? And I'd go, yeah, let's go in anyway. So I've just put it in because I, I, we've got chance, so let's do it. We're also going to be going to Winchester. Um, we're going to be going to the cathedral and hopefully we're going to go to the Great Hall. They shut it at the drop of a hat, but I am trying to um, get that sorted. Tales from the Fox Den, Nathan Amin could meet us in Wales. Absolutely. So I haven't got the, I'm not going to announce the speakers yet for the tour, um, but we have some very, very interesting speakers lined up. So anyone, any of you don't know, uh, when you're on a tour with me, we also have historians. We always have a historian with us um it will be gareth russell on this tour and then we have historians come in and give us talks as well so for instance uh in may we had jonathan foyle and tracy borman as well as gareth russell speak to us uh the next tour which is going in a few weeks we have um gareth russell and kate mccaffrey uh in september this year we have estelle peronk also joining us so we have some fantastic speakers along the way but yes so um yes in the Fox Den, we may what you may well see Nathan. He doesn't know yet. Um, so yeah, so we'll be taking in Winchester Cathedral, hopefully the Great Hall, which has the Round Table. Um, which do it? Do do you want me to I tell you a little bit about the Round Table at Winchester? So um, in Win Winchester Great Hall, which has been, so that's the birthplace of Arthur Tudor. Sorry, that's why we would take in um, Winchester. Um, it's the um uh ancient capital as well of england um under uh, um, mercy it's where alfred was um had his uh, uh capital but but the great hall is the only remaining part pretty much of the castle of, of winchester castle where uh arthur tudor henry the seventh son was born and and he makes elizabeth the of your go there quite heavily pregnant because he's very keen to make this connection back to um 
to ancient kings, to an ancient bloodline. Um, he calls him Arthur because he wants him linked to the legend of King Arthur. Um, but the so in the Great Hall, it, up on the wall, actually, is the round table supposed to be, you know, the, the legendary round table. It is, uh, it's painted green and white in sort of sections, almost a bit like a dartboard. I hope that <laughs> doesn't offend anybody. Um, red and white being the Tudor colours, of course. And it was painted on the uh, orders of Henry VIII, ready for a visit by the Emperor Charles V, so Catherine of Aragon's nephew, Charles V. Uh, and Arthur is supposed to be top and middle. I mean, it's a round table. The idea, obviously, with a round table being everyone is, is equal. But as it is on the, the wall, you have uh, Arthur depicted in the middle top. <clears throat> That looks suspiciously like Henry. <laughs> wouldn't you? Wouldn't you? I would. Well, maybe I wouldn't be pretending to be Arthur, but you know. So anyway, that's in the Great Hall. Really hoping to get to see that during the tour as well. So I'm trying to actually book that because, like I say, it's. I don't know if any of you have ever tried to just pop to Windsor. The amount of times that the Great Hall is closed is incredible. It's run by the County Council. It's used for just loads of other things. But the hall, the hall is thought to be very, very much like, if not almost identical to the hall at the Tower of London, the Great Hall at the Tower of London, where Anne Boleyn would have been tried. So there's another reason to to try and see it if you can. It's also been the local court. So lo loads of interesting things have happened in there. Um, so that's Winchester. Um, after Winchester, we're going to visit Ludlow Castle. Um, Ludlow Castle is where Arthur Tudor uh, went as Prince of Wales, as uh, head of the, um, the marches. And it's where he took his new wife, Catherine of Aragon, back to. It's also where he died. Now, the uh, church where his heart is buried is St Lawrence's in Ludlow we're visiting there as well uh, Ludlow Castle by the way is also where Catherine of Aragon's daughter with Henry VIII Mary where she was sent as um, Princess of Wales um, and nominal head of the of the marches then as well so she she also went up there so Ludlow Castle, and then we're finishing off with the day in Worcester. Worcester Cathedral is where Arthur Tudor is buried. It's where his chantry is, uh, with just covered in um, in in um, heraldry and symbols. You can see there. Wow, there's actually there's a debate as to how it got damaged, but you can see quite a lot of damage on the in the chantry itself that either happened well could have happened a, a number of times in churches where churches were um were uh, decimated you had uh edward the sixth reformation so arthur tudor's um nephew his reformation you also of course had the civil war like we were just saying churches came uh were badly damaged during the civil war um but so you can see lots of damage on it but there's also a story that some of the damage happened in preparation for a visit from elizabeth I, who definitely did visit um she she went and saw the tomb of uh the it's like a chess tomb. His body's much lower, but uh, uh, it's not actually in it, but the chess tomb um, for Arthur. Elizabeth I went and saw that. So you're literally following exactly her footsteps. There's not enough room to do anything different. <laughs> you're going to be actually following in Elizabeth's footsteps uh, in Worcester. Um, if any of you who's seen, uh, or if you've not, take a look. I, I There's part one of... Uh, the Worcester Cathedral archives on my YouTube channel because Worcester was one of the it's one of the oldest oh it was one of the 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 earliest established um, um, cathedrals then it had a, a monastery attached to it and it was a seat of learning and some of the oh my god I mean honestly there's a plethora of incredible manuscripts 
um uh, there i've just done part one because i hadn't i've got so much i'm going to do a part two i might even do a part three if, if when i come to it i've got even too much in for a part two so um have a look after this on my youtube channel i'll put a link another video you might be interested in um just skirting back around to the civil war is i covered how a king can be um tried for treason and convicted for treason so that is also that was the live that i did um back in presumably january um uh to coincide with the trial so i'll put a link to that in as well linda what condition is ludlow castle in so it is ruined it was slighted um in fact it wasn't it wasn't slighted after the civil war excuse me but it was left um to go into ruin However, there's still quite a lot that you can walk around. So it's sort of part ruin, part not. Um, very, very picturesque. Um, and because it was sort of left to go into ruin, you've still got quite a bit um, remaining, if you like, of stuff that hasn't been messed with um, because it wasn't then turned into anything else. So, um, yeah, it's uh, it's it's... It's very nice. I've got, I think I've got some videos from Ludlow. Um, if I haven't, maybe, maybe I'll pop back to Ludlow and do one. Another place that I want to get back to. It's not far away from me either. So, so that, uh, Pembroke Castle, Raglan Castle, uh, Gloucester Cathedral, Winchester Cathedral, hopefully Winchester Great Hall, Ludlow Castle and Worcester Cathedral will make up the, 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 the backbone of the rise of the Tudors tour, which will be the 21st till the 27th of September, 2024. Now, if you're interested in that, uh, patrons, that is going to be made available to you um, uh, on the 18th, Sunday, the 18th of June, uh, everyone else a week later. So that's what happens with bookings. Uh, they're always available. Tours are always available to patrons to book for seven days before they go on general release uh, as another little perk for that. OK, so if you're around tonight, History After Dark, 8.15, we're talking about Samuel Pepys. So obviously it's me, Dr. Kat and Catherine uh, Ibbotson now. She's changed her name. Catherine Brooks, you'll know her as the historical collaborator. Uh, we're all together again tonight, 8.15 p.m. London time, uh, talking about Samuel Pepys as part of our deceased git series so he, we're on P so we're, we're, we're rattling through them now just in time for a bit of disruption over the summer holidays actually so hopefully you'll be around for that um, next week I will be back I'm trying to think if it's the week after that that I'm on tour <laughs> I shall tell you near the time so everyone I'm going to leave you there hope you have I hope you have a fabulous day. Love you to join us tonight for History After Dark. It's history.after.dark on Instagram, History After Dark on YouTube. And if not, did I see you next week? All right. Uh, take care, everyone. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.